Happy Monday, everybody, and happy Labor Day. It's another edition of Ask Mike. Courtney Mims alongside Mike Irwin here. Mike, we have a ton of questions, but I forgot to do this last week. You remember when I say like and subscribe and all those yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. Well, when that happens, you guys do an amazing thing, and you like and subscribe and comment, and you make our videos go viral on YouTube. So okay. that's great. So like, subscribe, comment. I know last time I said, tell me if you, burritos are your favorite food. A lot of people had things to say about that. So now tell me your favorite movie or something. If you don't even have to comment about what we're talking about, just comment, like, and subscribe. So okay, okay. let's jump into the questions, right, Mike? And should I say questions this week? There's a lot of comments. Yeah, well, there's a lot of just flat out statements. Yes. And I'm going to be making some people mad this week, I, but it's okay. I know you are, and I'm excited to get feisty Mike Irwin on this Labor Day. Our first question this week comes from popular porkster who wants to know, does the blowout of overmatched UAPB mean that we are much improved from last season? I say yes, but a lot of fans are saying it means nothing. Well, it does mean they're better. Obviously, there's a question when you play UAPB and they kind of a lower ranked uh, Division II or football championship subdivision school. But it's not like they're the only team in that division that plays Division I teams and, and gets beat. So. My argument all along, until we get two or three more games down the road and they play other teams, you don't know if they're that bad or not. It could absolutely be that Arkansas played really well. But what we're going to see as we go through this is there are a lot of people that just, they just think that game means nothing. Well, it's a game you play, and you could have, there, there are a lot of things could have happened in that game. They could have screwed up. The game could have been, there could have been a bad quarter. Two years ago, three years ago, they played UAPB and had a big halftime lead and didn't, didn't score in the second half. So all this stuff is not automatic. And I will tell you flat out, whatever UAPB ends up being, they're not the worst team that Arkansas has ever played. They're not the worst team that's ever played a Division One. People are trying to act like that. That's idiotic. They're, just, they're not probably not very good. We don't know for sure. But let's look at what they did. Because if you say this doesn't mean anything, then let's go all the way back to 1928, which was the last time there was a bigger lopsided win than this. So that means that every team from 28 all the way up to now didn't beat a team this bad at Arkansas, okay? So does that mean that those 94, 95 teams di just didn't play somebody as bad as UNLV? U UAP? I mean, U UAP? UAPB, yeah. did it, does it mean that, they, that, that the reason they didn't beat somebody that bad in all those other years, national championship team didn't do that, uh, 77 team didn't do that, a lot of good Razorback teams never beat anybody that bad. And I got to believe that somewhere along the line, Arkansas played teams this bad occasionally. So, yeah, it's something to do that. They did something that's never been done in school history. They scored on every, a touchdown, not just scored. They scored a touchdown on every single possession of the game. So that, that had never happened before. Um, so now let's look at some specifics. Okay. Because here's what I'm going to say. Arkansas had nine rushing touchdowns last season. They had eight in one game. I know. I tweeted that. I was like, how? This is crazy. <laughs> Quinton Jackson ran for 101 yards, scored twice, averaged 12 yards a carry. Uh, the quarterback averaged like 15 yards a carry. Uh, they did all this stuff. K Talon Green ended up with a huge QB rating, completed 70% of his passes. Arkansas ends up with 687 yards of total offense. They were 9-0 and on third down conversions. If you look at some of these, if you go to, the, to ESPN and it, it shows the play-by-play -play on every drive, I mean, they had a drive of 90-plus yards. They had two in the 80s, one in the 70s, a couple in the 60s. We're not talking about, I think it was Missouri. I watched so many games, but one of these blowout SEC games, the reason they scored all these points is because the other team was turning the ball over on their own end of the field. Uh, U UAPB didn't turn the ball over one time. Arkansas scored on long drives almost every time. There were a few that were in the 20 and 30 range, but most of them were in 60, 70 yard range. So you do that, and then here's the capper on this. To those of you who say this means nothing, look at all the blowouts in the SEC, and there were a bunch of them. There were six blowout shutouts. Six SEC team teams shut out their opponent and scored 60 plus points. 
yeah. there were some of them bigger. I mean, uh, Ole, uh, Ole Miss won like 73 to nothing or something yeah, like that. something like that, yeah. So there were a bunch of those, and then there were, so there were six of those. There were four others where the opponent scored seven points or less, and they were still scoring 60 points in those games. So you got 10 games that are blowouts. And you could just go, I watched both of them. You could go through there and go, wow, that offense looks good. Boy, these guys really look good. But they're playing teams that probably are similar to UAPB. And what gets me is a lot of people are trying to say, no, no, UAPB is worse than that team. How do you know that? Did, did you do research on FCS teams and you know where they stand? Uh, so Arkansas did that, but all those other SEC teams have big wins too. Guess who was named Offensive Lineman of the Week in the Southwest Conference? Yeah, we know. Fernando, Carmo yeah, Fernando, Fernando Carmona. Carmona. So an Arkansas lineman mm -hmm. was named Player of the Week, and it could have gone to any of the linemen for those other schools, mm -hmm. but it didn't. Yeah. So I don't think the SEC is so stupid that they would just pick a guy that, oh, yeah, he was going up against a meatball, but let's go ahead and pick him. Yeah. I mean, it just You can't sit here and say that win means nothing. No, and, and you look at what they were able to do. Like you, you mentioned the rushing touchdowns, but even when you look at the rushing yards, I think that they had 279 on the ground at the end of the game, which was the most they've had in a season opener since, and what, 2013? The second, the off number one offense didn't play in the second half, mm -hmm. and they cut the, 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 cut the t pl game time down by, by what, 20, 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Because five they minutes cut in the third minute quarter, quarter, five minutes in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So it was just an impressive win. Yeah. And throw, and then you go all of that. And by the way, they held you UAPB to three point yards a snap, and uh, they allowed only one third down conversion in in ten tries. One third down conversion in ten tries. And what did Arkansas, Arkansas was nine and zero on third down yeah. conversions. So there's all this stuff that you just look at it and you go, this doesn't happen very often. Yeah. And so to me, I'm not saying go crazy and think everything, all problems are solved. They're going to win 10 games this year. Shut up. They're really good. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you look at this game and find critical and, and I'm criticizing them for this, there's something wrong with your head. You need to stop watching football or go find another team to support because they got to play games, yeah. and you don't play a butt-kicking team every week. You just don't. The schedule's tough enough as it is. And if you can't enjoy a win like this, you started off mad, and you're going to stay mad no matter what. You know, I was talking to some people over the weekend about, you know, their teams and who they were playing, and they that none of them, not Alabama, Ole Miss, you know, none of those, Tennessee, none of them were complaining about playing nobodies. None of them were mad over their team taking on it. Oh, this didn't test us enough. No, they were happy with the win. They said, yeah, yeah, we're excited for the rest of the season. Uh, I, I wonder if it's just Arkansas fans that they're just what, so – so of scared of what happened last year that they're not willing to. I don't to think it's scared. It. I think it's just they're just mad. I made a point with a guy I know about A and M, and I said you won't find any more contrasting fan bases because you got delusional A and M that against all uh, every year they they go through this. They start off thinking they're going to win it all. They got 107,000 people. They were on game day, ESPN game day. They had Johnny Manziel running around. Everybody's going crazy. What's his name? <laughs> Run around, put the Pat McAfee, no, no Lee Corso. Lee Corso yeah. puts on the Aggie helmet, whatever he put on. <laughs> They're going crazy. They're going nuts during the game, and they get beat. Yep. So you would think at some point Aggie fans would it would start to they'd start to figure it out. It hasn't though. It hasn't. Because here's what happens in every one of these games, year after year after year. I've watched them on TV for 50 plus years, and there's a moment in which. Something bad goes wrong, and they have a, always have a close-up of some, some Aggie fan that looks like they're about to kill themselves. Like they just can't believe this just happened. And you're thinking, at some point, oh would gosh. it dawn on you that this keeps happening? Now, Arkansas fans, on the other hand, they get it. If mm -hmm. their team stinks, it, it stinks forever. <laughs> they're not going to give them one bit of credit. If this happened, if A&M did this, even to U UAPB, A&M fans would be going apo over this. Yes, they would. But Arkansas <laughs> fans are just going, eh. I, I love the comparison, Mike. That cracked me up that you said that because you're so it, So right. what I'm saying is at least A Arkansas fans, you are not delusional. No, no, you are not delusional. We're, we're happy that you guys have a, a little bit of a... 
common sanity. sense. It's common, common sense. Yeah, sanity. you understand that when something bad happens, it could happen again. It could exactly. I love that. And we and to be fair, you know, we talked about the good, but we there is some things that we can criticize, and I believe we have some questions about yeah, that. So sure. we're going to jump into that too. Blood Red Hog wants to know, other than getting the first game jitters out of the way, what does this win really tell us about the team? I was impressed with the D-line, but UAPB was clearly outmanned. Yeah, and that's probably true. That's probably a good observation. But the truth is, and I'm going to make this point, mm -hmm. we don't know how what that means. It, was UAPB outmanned because Arkansas was that good, or was it because UAPB was that bad? Exactly. That's the real issue here, and we're not going to know for a while. We aren't, and, and you make that point. I've made that point on the radio multiple times since Thursday night's game, of, and even after the game. I know everyone's going to say, it's UAPB, it's UAPB, calm down. But we just don't know. We cannot make an accurate assessment oh, based yeah. on this game. Why do you get into some more of these questions? Oh, I mean, gosh. I'm, I, I don't know if I want to. Hot Dogger says, seeing the offense play so much better gives me hope. Malachi Singleton is really a standout quarterback. Our team is in good hands if Green needs help. Well, that's a good takeaway and a good point. And, look, one of the issues when over the previous three seasons since Sam Pittman got here was they just didn't have a viable backup quarterback. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. they just had guys. You, 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 if, if K.J. Jefferson got hurt, like in 2000, 2022, mm -hmm. I think he missed three games yes. and they lost all three yep. of them. And then he was, he'd was he been out for another game and didn't really work out. So he, he tried to play a game where he hadn't worked out. And it wasn't and he, very good. And he yeah. was, wasn't playing well. And so they lost that game. In, in other words, you got the impression they don't have a backup quarterback. Well, the thing you need to understand about Bobby Petrino is he doesn't operate that way. He doesn't want just one quarterback. He wants backups. So when Ryan Mallett was here, guess what? You had Tyler Wilson. I remember one day at Auburn, uh, Ryan Mallett went down. Everybody thought Arkansas was dead. And here comes uh, Tyler Wilson playing his butt off. They didn't win that day, but it, I mean, Auburn was awfully good. The point is, this is what you're, you're going to get with Petrino. And people want to know why this, they kept scoring, because he kept running the kind of offense that he would run if those quarterbacks, if Malachi Singleton has to come into a game, if K.J. Jackson has to come into a game. He wanted them out there running the offense, not going, okay, hand the ball off and waste time so we won't blow this team out. Right, and, and that's the other thing. And I don't know if we talk about it in here, but I was hearing a lot of people on social media go, Oh, you need to stop scoring. You need to stop scoring. This is embar you know, you're embarrassing UAPB. And I said, no, 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 no. Look around the SEC. Who stopped scoring? No one did. No one did. And and you want to give those guys meaningful snaps. That's right. You want to give these guys game experience, and that's what this was doing. So don't stop scoring. It's I, I don't think that's <laughs> guy goes out there and works his butt off all spring, all fall camp. He gets in the game, and you're going to tell him to go out there and just waste time? No, you can't no, do that. No, exactly. You want to give these guys meaningful game reps, and that's what we got to see with Malachi and even KJ. Mm -hmm. uh, B. Price says, if QB1 doesn't get more accurate throwing the ball, we got some long days ahead. If you had more fans like that, you would have some really long days. What is he looking at? <laughs> Maybe he's talking about the first quarter. That's what I'm thinking. Because but there were, it wasn't a terrible first quarter. No. I mean, you know, he had some incompletions. But then here's, here's what I think happened. You got, you got this guy. He's been coached all since last spring, all through the spring, all through the summer, all through camp. And now here's his big moment. Yeah. Well, he's got to deliver. He knows that. He knows Petrino's sitting there looking at him. And so he's a little shaky. But what happens? They go over and do the iPad thing, and then all of a sudden, what happens in the second quarter? It's better. Because he could not have played any better. He could not have thrown the ball any better. There was one play where he's rolling against his body to the left, throws a perfect pass over Ty Washington, where yeah. all he does is it has, he's on a dead run, and that ball lands right in his hands. It's beautiful. You it can't defend a pass it was, like no, that. It was, it was beautiful. Beautiful. So, I'm not saying he's going to throw that every every time this year, but if he can throw a pass like that, he's going to beat some people this year. That's my whole point. Well, and the other thing, too, I mean, you, you just mentioned it. It's the first game jitters. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a guy that all camp long, everybody has been hyping up, right, for good reason, too. 
he knows that he, he has some pressure on himself. He knows that. And I mean, coming into the SEC, I mean, there was a question asked to him last week about what's it going to be like playing your first SEC, you know, playing with an SEC team, your first game playing with an SEC team. He's he knows that, yeah. that, that he's putting some pressure on himself as well. And I think you saw that early on. He settled in nicely. Yeah, completed 70 percent of his passes. That's a really good number. But his Q quarterback rating was 92 too. Just by comparison, K.J. Jefferson oh, at UCF, oh, oh. it was under 10. It, it was, and, and Gus Malzahn did say I, uh, in the postgame press conference, he blamed himself for okay. the play calling. He did. He blamed himself, but I said, mm, okay. okay. What did Chad Moore show back up? I don't, I'm not oh, sure. my goodness. Oh, my gosh, Mike. And then the other thing I want to mention really quickly to B. Price, I mean, we knew he was fast, but did you know he was that fast? Oh, I mean, oh, my goodness. Yeah, he just, I, but, of course, somebody's going to say, no, UAPB was that slow. Okay, well, so. you know what? You can always say that to us. Guess what? We, we won't know until the big test comes up this Saturday. We're going to know real quick what this team is made of. Uh, that'll do, Pig says. I have never seen a game where all three strings of players scored. Is there another time when this has happened? Well, we don't know. We're not going to research that. It may have happened. But <laughs> what I... What, Mike says, we're not going to go well, back Well, I mean, come on. That. Yeah. that would be so hard to research. Yeah. But what I will say is there's never been a game in which all three units scored every time they had the ball and all three defensive units pitched a shutout while they were on the field. Correct. I promise you that's never happened before because it's never happened with this team, <laughs> much less three star, three different units. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if there, I mean, it'd be crazy to research that. I don't even know how you'd research that, but if somebody knows of, of maybe a time that happens, let us know, but I'm with you. I don't know if that is ever Well, they just before. went beyond what he's suggesting. That, that's the whole point. Not only did three oh, units oh, play yeah. and score, but three units played and never not, never did not score. Exactly. The only time they were on the field, they scored. And then the, the, when the defense went out, they stopped the other team and didn't let them score. And I don't think we're arguing about the fact that I'm not that sure maybe that that's ever happened anywhere. I agree with you, but I, we're not arguing that three strings going out and scoring in a single game, that's, yes. that's probably but I'm not before. sure there's ever been a football team that played three different units and all three units scored every time they had the ball, and all three defensive units pitched a shutout. I'd be willing Through to the, bet if I it don't happened. Think that's ever happened before. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet that that But hasn't again, happened. we know why that happened because UAPB is the worst team that ever played. There you go, Mike. You you got to keep saying that for the people <laughs> that that believe that uh, believe that out there. Mousetown says, "What good does it do to play it?" Oh, here we go, Mike. Here we go. Here's the comments. Mouse Town says, what good does it do to play a team like this? UAPB is so bad, Arkansas would have been better off having a team scrimmage last Saturday. Now they're going to Stillwater over Conference. Okay, I, he's being sarcastic. I uh, hope so. Because hope that's so. just what you do when you get mad. You say something like that. But I don't think, I think the opposite on, on going there over Conference. I don't think they're dumb enough to think, oh, boy, we won 70 to nothing. That means we're going to beat these guys. They know what they're in for. But what I do think is that you're a lot better off going to Stillwater after winning like this than what if they'd won 35 to 7. Yeah. You know, so it, it gives you confidence. It doesn't make you overconfident, but it gives you confidence. And as far as going and scrimmaging somebody, give me, if he really was serious about that, first of all, t your quarterback did not get hit in these scrimmages. This was, you have to play a game in which he can be hit. Yeah, this is a live game. You need this is that. a live game. And so to say you would have been better off just staying at home and scrimmaging, I, I have to believe he's just being sarcastic. Yeah, that's a nutty thing to say. And I think you're right, Mike. They're not going into Stillwater overconfident. They they know that Oklahoma State is a good I think they have confidence team. and that there's nothing wrong with confidence. It's just not overconfident. There, there's nothing wrong with confidence. That's exactly right. And if you if you take anything away from this win over UAPB, it's that at least they have some confidence sure. going into next week, and they right? should. And they should. And the other thing, too, is there's a phrase out there. What is it? Uh, good good teams win, great teams cover, right? Isn't that the, yeah. isn't that the phrase? And they went out and covered the spread. So, yeah, I, mean, I think it was SEC Mike. That yeah. website moved them up from, like, 12th in the SEC to 6th or yeah, something yeah, like that. Think, so it yeah. moved you up. Yeah. And and if you're listening to SEC Network and all of, and all of those national guys, they took notice of this. I will say that. Yeah, they, they took did. notice of this win. 
Husker 71 says, I hope we never play a team that bad again. Okay. You want to <laughs> you want to come at this comment right here, Mike? Well, again, how do you know? How do you know how bad they are? Are they're, you are you basically saying are you saying that they've never played a team that bad before and you hope they never play a team that bad again? Look. Okay, let's look at it. Oklahoma Temple, Tennessee Chattanooga, Ole Miss Furman, Alabama Western Kentucky, and they're I mean, it's not like any of these teams played some butt-kicking team. Now, of course we don't know how one compares to the other or whatever. But look, you've got to play games. We, if you would stop and think and go back, if you knew anything about this, you know why they played UAPB. Because Hunter Juracek, decided, Frank Boyle has always had a policy, we don't play in-state teams. He got an argument presented to him when he was the AD of, hey, Arkansas makes all this money, and, but the rest of us don't get hardly any of it. And I know when they wanted money to, to, uh, to do that renovation of the North End Zone mm -hmm. facility, there was yeah. a big controversy over other schools needed some facility money for facilities. Yeah. How come Arkansas was allowed to do that? And so Hunter Juracek basically comes back and says, okay, we're going to try to help these schools. Right, right. We're gonna, and so that's when they started playing them in baseball, basketball yeah, yeah. so you're playing in state schools and you're allowing them to make money they don't have a lot of travel costs right. because you just go across how, how far did UAPB have to go to this game you yeah, know exactly. just get on a bus and go there yeah so they're helping them out that's why they're playing them they're not playing them and going somebody didn't sit in his office and go huh let's see let's play the worst team ever this is two years down the road. I think UAPB may be the worst team ever, so I'm going to put them on the schedule so we can play them and beat them. That's exactly. not how that came no, about. No. He just made a decision. We're going to play them every other year mm -hmm. or whatever, and then we're going to play Arkansas State next year, and that's why that was done that way. Yeah, exactly. And, and the funny thing about everyone going, oh, it's UAPB, it's UAPB, I get that, but you're going off of last year and wait till they get a couple of games sure. under their belt and see how good they are. I mean, I, I mean, how would you know two, three years ago that they were going to be good or no, bad? You wouldn't you, know anything you about You wouldn't them. know anything about them. You wouldn't even, I mean, the coach they have has only been there, what, two years? Well, they act like that, that you just got on the phone two weeks ago and said, hey, we'll <laughs> play you guys because you're terrible. Yeah. We want to beat you. Okay, we'll play you. Exactly, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but let's go on to the next question here, or the next comment, I should say. Our Crabtree says, we really didn't play anybody, but we sure had fun scoring touchdowns. Yeah, well, at least that's a good attitude. Yeah. You should yeah. have, even if, you're, if, even if you're acknowledging that the opponent wasn't much, what do you get out of a game? It's fun, right? Was it? Did, did did you watch this game on TV, or if you went to it in person, were you sitting there mad watching all those touchdowns? Were you mad when Arkansas just kept making those guys go three and out with it making you mad? I mean, it should be somewhat enjoyable. I don't say you should be like an Aggie and just jump up and down and go bananas. <laughs> yeah, they're winning a national title this yeah, year, Yeah, but, you know? but you could at least have fun with it. And then what he's saying is, yeah, I had fun watching that, watching those touchdowns. Listen, I know that you, you say, was anybody mad out there? But I was seeing a lot of comments. Uh, uh, people just Oh, angry, they were being sarcastic. Angry, just angry. Well, even if they're being sarcastic, it's just like, guys, come on. At least, and we've made this point before, at least it's a win, at least they covered the spread, and at least they have some confidence going into a game this hey, week in, in Stillwater. It's going to get worse. Keep oh, going. <laughs> oh, no. Don't tell me it's going to get worse, Mike. <laughs> Carol Fred says, so Arkansas blew out a bad FCS team under Sam Pittman. Maybe he should have rode the bus back to Pine Bluff with them. I think he'd be good coaching at that level. Yeah, so in other words, okay, Sam Pittman, you won this game in, the, in one of the biggest blowouts in school history, but my reaction is, would you please go play for Coach UAPB? I mean, this is, again, you, it's a no-win scenario. And, and look, Sam Pittman knows this. There are people that didn't want him hired in the first place right. because he didn't have head coaching experience. Then when he had a pretty good first year, when they had the COVID All-SEC and they qualified for a bowl game, even though TCU ratted out and wouldn't play them. <laughs> and then they, when they won nine games after you too. So these people go into hiding, but they're still mad. And then the next year when, when uh, you know, K.J. Jefferson got hurt all those games and then they dropped down from nine wins to seven wins, now they're starting to complain. And then last year it's like, you're awful. Yeah. You know, and now they want him gone. And they're not going to stop. 
if this team were to bounce back and win seven or eight games or nine or whatever, if they were to have an amazing turnaround, still wouldn't stop them because no, they would no. just wait for the next year for something bad to happen. Or they, The point is he's going to be dealing with this as long as he's the coach here. Yeah. So what did he say when he said he's coming back? What did Sam Pittman say? He said, I took this job with the goal of bringing this program back up, and that's what I want to do. When I, st when I retire, I want to at least be able to say that I left this program a lot better off than when I took it. Now, so does he get to do that? Or do they get what they want, which is him to be fired in, in disgrace and eh, I tried, but it didn't work? I mean, we don't know. I mean, but you're right. They do go back into hiding. If, it, if it, there's a really good season this year, they will go back into hiding until and something bad. Or, or they may just say, yeah, but it was the schedule was easier or whatever. They'll make some excuse. I mean, it's always an excuse, right? right. Um, Pig's Feet says, Notice quite a bit of complaining about Arkansas running up the score on UAPB. I have always thought that you should not humiliate your opponent. Playing second and third team players is a need. What is your stance? And well, we kind of talked about that. That is the point. They played second and third team players, and they cut time off the clock, yeah. and that was Sam Pittman's suggestion. So, I don't, again, I don't, we talked about it. I don't have an issue with that. I think you're trying to develop your other players. This is the first game of the year. This may be, if you look at their schedule, this may be one of the few times this year when you've got an opportunity to play some of these guys, mm -hmm. like K.J. Jackson. He might not get to play again, Absolutely. so you want to play him and you want him to get something out of it. You're not going to just say, Bobby Trino's not going to sit there and say, yeah, go out there and just snap the ball and fall down. It's just not going to happen. No. And nobody else did that. Nobody else in the SEC did that. And I don't think, like you said, it would be one thing if Sam Pittman said, "Now nah, we're not going to do 10-minute quarters. We're blowing you out. We're not going to do 10-minute quarters. We're going we're gonna to try and run the score up. But he even suggested, like you said, cutting down the time. Right. You know, and he making... put his backups in at halftime. He did. There were some of these schools that blew teams out that didn't do that. Yeah, exactly. They kept their, uh, kept their star players in a lot longer than I thought they would. So you're exactly right. But we talked about that. I mean, you've got to give these guys live reps. You just have to. Yeah. Uh, Razor Alex 88 wants to know, how are we feeling about the Oklahoma State game with week one under our belts. Oklahoma State didn't exactly light things up until later on in the game, but South Dakota State is definitely one of the best teams in the FCS. Actually, they're ranked the best team in the FCS. Going didn't in. they have like a monster winning streak going into this game? I think so, because they've been national champions yeah. for the past uh, two-time national yeah. champions. They were good. You could tell they had players, but you could also tell they were overmatched. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about Oklahoma State. You need to understand this. they got 17 returning starters. Of, 20, uh, of 22, 17. No. So you don't have to go to the portal like Arkansas did and try to rebuild. You've already got. But then they went to the portal. They have five, all five offensive linemen from last year who started are back. Mm -hmm. But then they went and got two more, and they played seven in this game. So this is a good team. Yeah. Sam Pittman made this point, talking about Arkansas's defensive line. He said, sometimes you can do some things with your scheme where you, you've got movement. You're, you're doing things to confuse the other team's offense. If you've got jittery offensive linemen, which Arkansas had last year, you can do things to, to get those guys to, to move and get a, a, you know, a false start right, penalty right. or you can get them to block somewhere where there's not supposed to. There are things sometimes that he said, you can't do this with these guys. They're all older. They've all been around the block. You're not going to fool them. He said, the only way we're going to be able to successfully deal with their offensive line is to meet them body on body and be more physical than they are and it's going to be tough yeah. that's the kind of job that they face now what did south dakota state did they they went out and stopped mr heisman that was their they goal did. and they yeah. did he got over 100 yards but he was on 20 something carries he didn't average four yards a carry so they they concentrated on doing that and all oklahoma state did was just throw the ball up because they've got yeah. speedy receivers they they threw the ball to eight different guys and they've all got speed, so Arkansas's secondary is going to get tested in ways that it didn't this week. Yeah. So we'll find out a lot more about that secondary. I think I said to uh, I said this on the Pig Trail show the other night, and I said this to a couple of Arkansas fans after looking at the tape over this past week, and I think it is going to come down to how each secondary plays because Oklahoma State's secondary. Yeah, if you watch the game. They left some guys open for uh, yeah. for uh, South Dakota State, and I mean, if you had a quarterback that had more time there and and just didn't get so much pressure by those linemen, 
he might have made some throws, and it could have been a different different story there. So I think secondary play is going to be key this week. Um, so we'll have to see uh, what happens in that matchup. Armand Abbey says, which SEC team impressed you most in week one? I'll go with Vandy just because they were the only conference team to pull off an upset. I honestly thought the Vandy game was, was pretty crazy because I, like everybody else, did not think they would win. Well, I've <laughs> always talked about the fact that I watch games just to watch for upsets. Yeah. I love them. Yeah, me and, too. And so I did enjoy this game. I was going back and forth. Got to the end of the regulation, and they, they had a chip shot field goal to win it in regulation. The guy missed it. I know. I'm Mine. thinking, well, he, his name is Mud. But then they <laughs> came back in overtime and won it. So they were persistent. They weren't going to take no for an answer. They were going to win that game, and they helped the SEC embarrass the ACC because this was a team that was supposed to be one of the better ACC it teams. Was, yeah, everybody and, picked them. Every national yeah. media, I don't so, believe anybody picked Vanderbilt. So, yeah, I understand why you say that, but there were so many impressive SEC teams. I'm just watching them, and I watch with a critical eye, and I'm going, oh, my goodness, Missouri. Oh, Tennessee, oh, Ole Miss. I'm looking for any of them that might not. The only one I'm looking at, Aggies. <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> I know you, I know you and they were. weren't terrible. They just no. weren't what they were supposed to be. And then there was, I didn't watch the South Carolina game, but evidently they no, didn't. Don't, look. Uh, don't talk about that. The, that was bad. The, and then Florida. <laughs> also, don't talk about that one. That was bad, too, but so, we all knew that was going to happen. So, there's, so. Those, there were a few like that, but there were so many of these SEC teams that were so impressive. So for a question like this, who was the most impressive? I really had to think about that. And it came down to either Tennessee or Ole Miss. Okay. Not Alabama. Okay. Alabama was impressive. Okay. Not Georgia. I realized Georgia was playing a good team. Yeah, they played, yeah. They but, were playing Clemson. But I'm just looking at, at, in the end, I'm just looking at Ole Miss and thinking they're so good on both sides of the ball. And Dart has all these receivers, and he's throwing darts. And I'm thinking, they can score on you every time they throw the ball. Uh, maybe they were playing a terrible team. Maybe they were playing the worst team of all time. Well, we'll, we'll find out, right, <laughs> <laughs> going forward. But I, that was the team that impressed me the most was okay. Ole Miss. And I was, look, I don't like Ole Miss. I don't like Widow Wayne Kiffin. You know, I was hoping they'd stink it up. But. I mean, he recruited well, and he used the portal well. I, I mean, I, I see what you're saying with Ole Miss, but I still have to go back to Vandy because I think everybody okay. thought they were going to be terrible. But they, impressive they to me is how good like are that. they going to be this year? That's the question. I right? don't think Vandy's winning the SEC. <laughs> no, I think I no, think Ole no, Miss no, 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 might no. pull it off. No, no, no. I'm not saying they're going to win the SEC. I was but telling people in the offseason, come on, everybody thinks Ole Miss. And Ole Miss people think they're going to win the SEC. It's going to be Alabama. It's going to be Georgia. Maybe Tennessee, not them. Yeah. And I'm not so but, sure now. But we were we we went to every single uh, we went to all days of SEC media days this year, and Vandy was one of the first teams to speak. And they were so funny because they got up there, and I remember I, I even asked a couple of questions to their guys because I felt bad there wasn't a lot of people yeah. uh, asking them questions. And, and they, they had a lot of confidence. And I was going, yeah. where's this confidence well, coming they, from? They, they finally fixed their stadium up, so they're proud. Well, it's, like, it's, it's like getting that. a new car. Well, makes well, you well, well they're, they're still, their stadium still needs to work yeah, to be It's done. better than it was. It's like, it's like you drove an old clunker and they, and they got you a four-year-old car. You know, it's a lot nicer. <laughs> it is a lot nicer, but they still are finishing it. They still are completing it because I, there was still work to be done okay. when I was watching that game um, this past weekend. WV Hawk fan says, I have two options for playing games in Little Rock, okay? One, continue playing uh, A-State or UAPB, but with them being the home team. Oh, this is very strange. Okay, okay. All, right. all right. Yeah. I'm going to hold my reservation until I hear number two. Uh, do home and home with other mid-majors and pay them to move their home game to Little What? What? See, this is what I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Yes, I think a lot of mid-majors would say, if you said, hey, come here, and we'll let you be the home team. And what does that mean? You get all the money like a home team does, and then they give Arkansas some money like they would if you were the road team? I don't really understand that. Yeah. I think teams would probably love to do that. But here's the, here's the whole issue, and this is why Arkansas wants to end those War Memorial games, because they want to play as many home games as possible, and they haven't been doing that. If you if you have to play four road games in the SEC. Yeah. That means the most number of home SEC games you're going to get is four. Well, they were playing a Jerry World game, so that gets you down to three instead of four because yeah. that's not at home. 
So now with Jerry World going away, and I talked last week, you person over at U of A I talked to said they're not renewing that contract or they're not playing somebody else. So that's going to give you a guaranteed four games at home every year. The SEC is about to mandate that you play at least one uh, Power Four conference team in your non-conference. That leaves you with three that you can pick whoever you want. So if you play somebody from a Power Four, they're not going to play you and then just say that's it. They're going to ask you to come to their place. So that means once you get if, – if Arkansas agreed to play North Carolina, that means – Arkansas would go to North Carolina, then North Carolina would come here or vice versa. You're still going to lose a game every other year right, doing that right. automatically. So that's going to get you down to seven home games. They don't want to go any lower than that. If you did this, you would be losing a home game. And yeah. that's they don't want to do that. So, you know, Hunter Yurchek has not said what he's going to do, but I got people telling me behind the scenes that they just, and especially, they make it easier because of all the problems you well, have. Well, that's what I was about to say. It's like, we, I don't think people would mind playing a game or, or the players or the coaches would mind playing a game of War Memorial if it was a nicer stadium. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just haven't, you haven't upgraded it. You haven't done anything, you know. And then they just, I mean, because they're playing one game a year there, they don't get it right. Yeah, the, Stuff the, water, the, work. Water didn't, the water fiasco last year, and then this year the bathrooms weren't working. And, I mean... I don't know. I, I, and if you're watching at home, there was all kinds of streaming problems. Uh, yeah, coming there out. were problems with the with the uh, broadcast. I mean, to me, if you're going to do one game a year there, you better do it right. Well, it's it's, one it's game. hard to do that though because you're only doing it once a year. Well, you kind of don't get into the flow of this thing. But you should at least do the one game right. Like this mean. is really difficult for me to talk about because I am a war memorial guy. I know. It was built the year I was born. We're the same age. <laughs> You know, you in a stadium are the same age. Same age, and I don't want it to go away because maybe I'll go away. You know, I don't like that. So I want them to continue. To, but, but here's what happened. When, when Reynolds Razorback was expanded and they didn't expand War Memorial, it was inevitable what was going to happen. Yeah. And then when you throw in this stuff now on the rules of the SEC, which you can't have host recruits, you can't handle it. If, they, if everything was equal and Little Rock agreed to build a brand new 80,000 seat sure, stadium, sure. Then sure, play both places. Yeah, it's no problem. But that's not the way it's done anymore. Mm -mm. You get punished by not playing at home by the SEC. And then you don't have that big stadium. You don't have a 70 or 80,000 seat stadium. You have the old stadium that never really much was done to it. And, it. and it's sad because War Memorial is so historic as well. I mean, last year when I was going into the history of it, and I was like, man, this place is... The history is oh. awesome. It's awesome. And and the other thing, too, I mean, we talk about your favorite coach, the Pirate, Mike Leach. He, wasn't he the one he who said, said it? it was the best place he'd ever seen. I know. So, I mean, you don't want games but, to go but away But see, that there, was a long time ago. And, again, here's what it would take, in my opinion. Um, Number one, you'd have to build a new stadium, I think, or at least renovate that totally and make it 80000 and fix all the problems. I, with, renovations, yes, definitely. Yeah. So that's the first thing you'd have to do. And then the second thing is you have to figure out a way to get the SEC to change this deal mm -hmm. where you can't host recruits. Yeah. You know, because yeah. that's a killer. Yeah. That's bad. So if you can't change that, you have no choice, in my opinion, but to move the games. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. And that's sad to say, both you and I, I mean, I, I like War Memorial, too. I just think... I have no problem with them playing there if, if everything is equal. Yes. But it's not but equal it's not anymore. E yeah, exactly. Marty Bird's Proxy wants to know, when were the freshman games discontinued? Did they go away simultaneously when freshmen became eligible for varsity play? Yes, they did. Okay. Uh, I wasn't around back then, so I called Grant Hall. Who's Wait, you weren't around back then? No, I wasn't around here back okay, then. Okay, okay. Uh, I called Grant Hall because he's covered the Razorbacks longer than anybody else. 69, you know what that means? What is that, 50, 55 years, something like that, he's oh covered Arkansas? Gosh. I mean, he just blows the rest of us away. I didn't get here until 75. He was here when they did that. He, he says it was 72, and he said, yes, once they started – allowing freshmen to be eligible, there was no need for these Shote games, these freshman games. You have to go back and understand that was probably a very big pain in the butt when you're trying to get ready for a game yourself, a varsity game, and you got to worry about this other game too and yeah. put, put, have personnel helping with that thing. So I can see, now I can understand why they did it. Let's go back and think about Lloyd Phillips. 
who was an Outland Trophy candidate, probably the best defensive lineman at, ever at Arkansas. Well, when he was here, he wasn't able to play as a freshman. Do you want him to just sit there on the bench and go to practice every day? How are you going to develop him like that? Yeah. But if he's playing in games, it gets him ready for the next year. Think about Bill Montgomery, one of the greatest quarterbacks at Arkansas. You want him just sitting around picking his nose for his freshman year doing nothing? Because not he played in freshman games, he was ready to go when he was a sophomore and they had a great year. Joe Ferguson, same thing. So I understand why they were playing those games, but when you made these guys eligible, it changed everything, and it, it changed in 70, 72. Did you call, say they called them shoat games? Is that because Yeah, they were the shoats. Because the, uh, that's a baby pig it's or a little pig? It's a baby pig, a little pig. I love they that. They were the shoats. <laughs> the shoat game, I love that. KY Hog fan asks, what did you think about Cal bringing Nolan Richardson to practice and have him address the team? I thought it was a smart thing to do. Well, my first reaction was, oh, that's really nice of him because Cal's been doing all these things. And I'm saying, look, he's basically trying to tie himself to the past, which he should do. If you're the new coach here, the new guy on the block, you should not come in with the attitude, hey, I'm, I'm Cal, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, nothing's happened until I got here. And he's not doing that. He's always, from the time he first got here, he recognized how Arkansas had success. He mentioned Nolan when he was hired and all that. So my first reaction, isn't that nice? But then I got to thinking about it and I watched that video. And he had an ulterior motive for, for what he was doing. Because what he did was he had Nolan, Cal has his way of speaking, mm -hmm. Nolan has his way of speaking, but they say the same thing. Yep. And he had Nolan up there telling those players Okay, Cal says, I want you to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. In other words, it's going to be hard out here on, in these practices. It's going to, you're going to be uncomfortable. We've got to get you where you know it's going to happen and you don't feel uncomfortable because it's what you're used to. Nolan said, We're going to, our practices are going to be 40 minutes of hell. They're going to be so hard that by the time you get in a game, you'll be glad you're in a game, not in practice. And so it's the same thing. And what Cal, to me, is, is saying to his players is, this guy won a national championship, was national runner-up, went to three Final Fours, untold numbers of Sweet 16s and Elite Eights, and he did it at this school, and he did it with the same philosophy I have. In other words, this has happened here before, and if it's going to happen again, it's going to happen this way. We're going to have to work. We've got good players here, but that's not enough. We've got to work. Yeah. So I thought it was smart on his part. Yeah, and I can't remember. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't. I don't remember the last time Nolan went to a practice. And no, I, it's never happened like this, and, and I love okay. it because Nolan needs to be more involved. Yes, he is kind of our our equivalent. He didn't win ten national championships, but he's Arkansas's John Wooden. He's the guy that did it, and this is a good basketball school. They were going to Final Fours all the way back in the '30s, so it's not like this program just arrived last week. There's been a long history of success, but Nolan's at the top, and he needs to, he's here, he still lives here, he's in his 80s, I don't know how much longer he's going to be with us, but he needs to be a part of things. He needs to be seen publicly, and I think, I, I, I really congratulate Cal for bringing him in here, letting him talk to those guys because they needed to hear what Nolan had to say. Absolutely. I love that video. I thought that was great. They put the whole speech out there for us. That, yeah. that was awesome to watch. It is over on, on the Razorback Twitter right now. It's over on my Twitter and over on the Pig Trail Nation Twitter as well. So if you missed it, definitely take the time. I think it was six minutes, four minutes or something like that. Take the time to watch it because it was really good. And our final question of the, of the day is from S. Giles who asked, could you tell us about Billy Moore? I read where he passed away last week. I know he was QB at Arkansas. But that was before my time. Well, so. it was before my time, too, so I had to do some research. Yeah. I've, I've talked a lot about Eddie Lynn, Eddie Lyon, who was my best friend, and uh, we started playing junior high football together in 1960. That was the year that Billy Moore was a letterman for the first time. Now, he was a quarterback, and in those days, you also had to play defense. He was mainly a safety, I think. Played some at quarterback, but then... At the longer he was at Arkansas, he played more and more at quarterback. He, his senior year, he was a starter. But he played in 60, 61, 62. Those were three pivotal years that set the tone for what happened in the 60s because they won the Southwest Conference in 60, tied for the Southwest Conference Championship in 61, and finished second in 62. And Billy Moore was a big part of that. And I, I called Eddie Lynn up 
that he went in the lineup. And I said, well, what was so good about him? Because he was always talking about Gerald Williams and, and Billy Moore. And I said, what was so good about him? And he said, he was just tough. He said, he wasn't a big guy, but he said, when you're a quarterback and you run over people like a linebacker, I mean, he hold, held the school record for longest yard run from the line of scrimmage for like 40-something years. It was 90 yards, and it was broken by Broderick Green, who went 99, and that can never be broken. But he, he was physical, and he said he, that he remembers reading in the newspapers because he would go get the Lubbock Avalanche Journal and read these little short clips on Arkansas, and then he'd show me the box score. And he said... There were all these comments about from, from his uh, teammates about what a leader he was because he just, he, he wasn't a quarterback that said, you need to block for me. He was a quarterback that said, if you don't block for me, I'll just run over the guy anyway, you know, <laughs> that kind of guy. Um, he also is the only, and I, I was astounded to learn this, he is the only Arkansas quarterback ever to be named first team All-American. They've had some great quarterbacks here but they've never had one that was a consensus first team All-America. He was the only one. Wow. So, and here's the other thing. He is the younger brother of Henry Moore. Henry Moore played on the 1954 25 Little Pigs team. Okay. And Henry Moore and that team went down to Austin in 1954 and beat Texas. I think it was 20 to nothing. And Henry Moore had an 80-yard touchdown run right after halftime in the third quarter that kind of blew that game open. And he is, he, he was just, the guy was amazing. He was physical, he was tough, he was mean, and apparently his little brother was a lot like him. So that, that ran in the family. They were, one of them won a Southwest Conference championship and the other was on a team that won it too and tied for it one year and then finished second. So they didn't, they were the, if you want to talk about Southwest Conference success, those Moore b brothers, they had it. Oh, that's awesome. I love that story, Mike. Thanks for sharing that with yeah. us. Thanks for sharing. That's going to do it for this week's Ask Mike. We'll see you next Monday to answer more of your questions.